Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Christian Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Steph Thurling. I'm the Executive Director of Christian Parenting, a mom of three, and I am so glad that you're here. This is a place where you can bring your real self, no matter what that looks like today, and be given the space, resources, and encouragement you need to set aside perfection and grow into the perfectly imperfect parent God made you to be. Hey guys, today on the podcast, we have Deborah Faleda. And Deborah is a licensed counselor, a homeschooling mom to four, a podcaster, a speaker, and an author. And today we are talking about her book, Reset, which challenges us to evaluate our emotional health and thinking habits, and then make changes to heal. So how we respond to our emotions, our situations, and even our past experiences is so important in how we parent. All of those things affect how we model and teach our kids to regulate their own emotions and walk through difficult situations. So today, Deborah gives us really practical advice about all of that and a really convicting and encouraging message. You're going to love her. Hey, Deborah, I'm so glad you're here with us today. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking all about your book, Reset. But before we do that, I like to start each episode learning about your family. So can you tell us who's in your family and then describe them in a word or a phrase? I guess that would make sense with the parenting podcast. We got to learn about your kids, (laughs) who you live with, all the people. Yes, I am a wife and mother of four. So our oldest is Ella, who's 12. And then we have three boys, Eli, Ezra, and Ethan, ranging from 12 all the way down to age two. Uh, So that's our family. We live in Pennsylvania. And we actually are a homeschooling family. So that's a little tidbit about us as well. That's fun. Have you been homeschooling the whole way through? Yeah, the whole way through. I homeschooled for one year during the COVID year, and I loved it. Did you? I did. It's not my calling. So, and I do think it's a calling, and I am not called to it full time. My kids are now in a different school, but I really loved the togetherness of it and the rhythm that we were able to create as a family. I just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it definitely has its blessings and its hardships, but I do agree. It's something that you have to feel called to do. And so that's kind of the season we're in. Yeah, I love that. And then I'm also asking all my guests, what is one thing that you want every parent to know? Oh man, that's a good question. I would say the first thing that comes to mind for me is that we teach our kids more by modeling Mm -hmm. than by speaking. (laughs) So there's a huge learning curve in how we live our life and what they learn about life through how we live and what we model. And so I think that's something that I'm really passionate about is teaching kids through our own behavior. And that's such a hard part about parenting too. It is. And it's so convicting when you see your kids doing something that you know they got from you and you're like, oh man. Right. It's really ugly coming out of you. (laughs) And sometimes it's subtle, you know, Mm -hmm. like we'll probably dive into this a little bit later, but just even how we handle our emotions, how we communicate, how we handle conflict in front of them or don't handle conflict (laughs) in front of them. And that's all of that teaches our kids about life and communication and relationships. And so I just think it's a really important way of parenting. Yeah. So we are going to talk about that. I can't wait because that's what your book is all about. Um, Your book is called Reset, Powerful Habits to Own Your Thoughts, Understand Your Feelings, and Change Your Life. So we are going to talk all about emotions and parenting. Um, Can you give us an overview, kind of what the book is about, and then what your heart behind writing it was? Yeah. So this book is all about change and healing from the inside out. And I think my heart for writing this book started back back in 2019, ironically, when I wrote the book before this, and that was called, Are You Really Okay? And I had gotten a book contract to write, Are You Really Okay? It's a book about like really assessing your mental and emotional health. I got a book contract to write that in 2019. So 2020 wasn't even a thing yet, right? Like we didn't even know it was around the horizon. And so after people started reading that book and it, and it was a very popular book and a lot of people really resonated with the message, I think they started coming back with the answer of, no, I'm not actually okay. Mm-hmm. I thought I was, but now that I'm reading, I'm not. Mm-hmm. 
And I realized there's a lot of things I've been hiding. And so, okay, now how do I become okay? What do I do? Yeah. And, you know, we map out a little bit of that. And are you really okay? It's a journey. But I just felt like it was so important to take, to go the next step and, and take 31 practical practices, habits, exercises, activities, things that you can actually do on your journey of getting healthy, because it's, it's great to have like a goal and this concept and theory of where you want to be. You can have all the ingredients, but if you don't have the recipe, it's going to be really hard to figure out how to make it how you want it. And I know a lot of people pursue change in different areas of their life. Even I have in different areas of my life and I failed. And so I really believe this is a book to help people pursue change, permanent, long lasting change from the inside out, rather than what we try to do is we try to change from the outside in. So if something, for example, like I don't want to yell at my kids anymore. Okay. You can set that goal (laughs) and you can want it all you want, but it is not the power of your will that will help you accomplish that. It's the power of your practices and the work you're doing from the inside out. So that's what this book is all about, healing from the inside out. Yeah, that's a really good example, the yelling at your kids part. I mean, because anything in parenting that you struggle with, you can want it so badly. Right. But unless you acknowledge the core stuff that's going inside of you, like it's just not going to work. So I like that example. So yeah, this book is really approachable too in the way that you write it. So each chapter, they're short, little tidbits, not tidbits, but they're short. So it's not like you're overwhelmed by the information. Yeah. Because normally I'll write like 10 to 12 chapters, but 31 chapters. I mean, it's, they are kind of broken into Mm bite-sized pieces that I hope, and you can tell me since you read it, that I hope don't seem overwhelming, especially because a lot of it counseling focused. Yeah. I mean, it's rooted in faith and scripture, but it's very counseling focused as well. And so I'm hoping the 31 practices are easy to digest for people who really want to seek change. Yeah, it really is. So each chapter has like a little reflect on a little reflection from you, some stories. There's a verse to reflect on, some background a habit to work on, and then questions to ask yourself. And they are challenging. Like there were some that I looked through and I was like, no, I don't want to do that today. (laughs) That sounds hard. But then, you know, the Holy Spirit pokes you and you're like, okay, I get it. I have to work on myself. But I think we can just put that out there that it's really hard to work on yourself. Like it's so much easier to say, to look at other people and see what needs to be changed in them or how your situation could be different. But we really do have to start with ourselves. Yeah. And I think it is hard. Someone asked me the other day, like, how do you motivate yourself to work on yourself when you know it's hard? Yeah. And my thought is, it's hard to work on yourself, but it's also hard to stay the same and allow your woundedness and trauma and toxicity and junk to affect everybody around you. That's hard too. Mm. And to live with wounds, to live with pain, to live with unhealthy habits in our life, I think is harder. So yeah, they're both hard, but I want to choose the hard that's going to give me a long-term ability to live an abundant life the way that God calls me to, rather than a hard that's just going to linger with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. So... You got it. Like you've, you probably heard that quote, choose your heart because they're both hard in different ways. Yeah. And then tell us why, like, why is it that you do have to work on yourself first? Well, I think in order to see clearly, you have to, according to the Bible, take the plank out of your own eye first. And what I love about that passage is it's saying, before you look at your brother's eye, before you look at the splinter in there, I take your plank out first. And then it, and then it goes on to say, then you will be able to see clearly to help remove the splinter from your brother's eye. It doesn't say don't help people heal, but it says you can't help anybody until you've helped yourself. So take that plank out of your own eye first, and then you will be able to see. So I think the key is I got to work on myself so that I can be able to see what needs to be done in my children's lives, what needs to be adjusted in my marriage, what needs to be adjusted in my friendships and my family and my community, because otherwise I'm seeing their stuff. I'm not seeing my own and I'm not seeing very clearly. I can't really help people in a real way 
if I've got my own junk blinding me of the things that I need to work on. So I think that's why it's really important. And I also say health isn't just for you. It over your health overflows into your family, mm-hmm. into your marriage, into your ministry, into your community. So it's not just about you. And I think that's a really important thing to realize. Like we have a responsibility to heal. Yeah, absolutely. There's a bigger picture that we have to be able to see and focus on clearly. And I think that as parents, it's so easy to put our own emotions and our own healing on the back burner because we're so busy for caring for other people. You know, we like how many times do you even forget to eat lunch because you're trying to take care of everybody else and do school like you are, you know? But from my experience, when I try to avoid my own emotions, they end up coming out anyway and not in a good way. So they come out through the point of least resistance. And, you know, one thing we talk about in reset is that you are like a volcano Mm -hmm. and all of that stress and pressure and underlying emotions begin to build and build and build. And you're like shoving it down. No, I don't have time for this. I'll do it later. I'll figure it out another time. I'll focus on me later. But the problem is when you do that, the pressure begins to build. And just like a volcano, it will find the point of least resistance. And that's where it will break through to the surface, usually in the form of anger, rage, aggression, unhealthy habits, shutting down, withdrawing, being depressed, relationship issues, anxiety, depression, marriage problems, because it will find the point of least resistance and it will come out in the form of an an emotional explosion. So I always say, if you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. Mm -hmm. And and it'll come out in an uncontrolled way rather than come out in a way that's actually beneficial and helpful for your life. Yeah. Can you give us an example of that? Like what it would look like if you're feeling an emotion and you're trying to <laughs> avoid it, what would that look like to actually handle that emotion? Understand. Okay. I got a great it. example, especially okay. for the world of parenting. Um, so I have a child who has some special needs and getting him to listen is Uh, is like an Olympic event (laughs) and working with him and helping him kind of through some of his challenges. And so you might have a child in your life like that, maybe something like ADHD or a different diagnosis or dyslexia or you name it. There's all these different things we have with unique children, special children, truly. I mean, special needs that says it all. They're special kids. But what you tell yourself influences how you feel, which influences what you do. For example, if I say to him, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, and he doesn't do those things right away. I have two ways to think about this scenario. The first way is, you know what? He's got some challenges. Let me try to present this in a different way and see if I can help him learn to obey. The other thought process is, oh my goodness, these kids, they just aren't obeying. They're awful kids. I can't, what kind of kids am I raising? I used to obey right away when my parents told me to, and I just can't believe I'm I'm tolerating this kind of disrespect. I don't deserve this. And that's what's happening in your head. So thought process number one will lead to an emotion of empathy, compassion, understanding, and and trying to do things a little differently. Mm -hmm. Thought process number two will lead to anger, irritability, irritation, feeling like there's injustice and starting to feel upset, frustrated, overwhelmed, which will then lead to your behavior. The behavior is going to be, you're probably going to just yell in anger because you're just so fed up or the behavior is going to be, you're going to go and try to connect with them and help them do things in a different way. So what you tell yourself underneath the surface as a parent is fueling your reactions to your children. Mm. Those reactions, uh, those explosions that are happening are rooted in something. When you dig a little deeper to the behavior, you'll find a feeling. And when you dig a little deeper underneath the feeling, you'll find a belief, a thought process, a pattern of thinking. And that's where you need the Lord's help to address those thoughts and see if they're actually rooted in truth or if they're rooted in things that are not true. Sometimes I say, Is this rooted in truth or is it rooted in my own trauma, my own stuff, my own junk? And I really believe that what comes up above the surface can help reveal to us the health of what's happening underneath the surface. Mm. So besides the deep work of 
healing from trauma or healing from whatever false thinking we have. Like in those moments when you have those two schools of thought that you can follow, you know, you're standing in a fork and you're like, I can go healthy thoughts or negative thoughts. Is it a matter of, would you say, just take a breath, slow down and remember what the healthy thinking is? 100%. To yeah. just step back. Anytime you feel an emotional response that's exaggerated, there's a good chance you need to stop and pause mm-hmm. and reflect. What is going on here? What am I thinking? Why am I feeling this? Because feelings are a signal. It's a signal telling you, okay, you need to pay attention to something. And a lot of times we just plow over the signal and keep going and end up in an unhealthy place. And this applies to our marriages, our relationships, our interactions. When you're feeling this signal, this overwhelming, exaggerated emotion, you need to stop Mm -hmm. and ask yourself, what's going on here? Why am I feeling this? Take a minute, go to your room, go to the bathroom, take a minute to breathe and pray. And don't just numb it by going to Instagram and scrolling till you feel better. Actually think through, what am I feeling right now? What am I thinking right now? What's going on here? How can I adjust what's happening in my mind? right now to begin to alter my feelings. What do I need in this moment? You know, when you start reading Reset, you might be surprised that the very first practice is to pause Mm -hmm. because it's like, I'm ready. 31 practices, bring them (laughs) on. Let's do this. Let's heal. Let's change. And I'm like, okay, ready, (laughs) ready, set, pause. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't learn how to pause in your life, to just stop the noise, to pull back and listen to God, listen to the Holy Spirit. You can't just lead the way without the direction of the Spirit. So even in those moments, you need the Spirit to say, hey, Deb, this is what I want you to work on. I need you to change this, fix this, alter this. This is not a healthy, true thought. And if I'm not in tune to that, if I'm not able to pause I am not going to be in step with the spirit. And so pausing is a really important habit to learn in the process of being a good parent. It's it's one of the practices, but it's a really important one. And it's such a good way to model healthy responses to your kids. You know, when they see you, it's so much better. And I need to be better at it because sometimes I'm really good at being like, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to breathe. And then I'm going to respond to you instead of react to you. But other times I don't because I'm not perfect. But when I do, I just, I think it's so powerful for our kids to say, mom's upset, but she's pausing first. Yes. And I talk them through it. I will tell them, listen, guys, Mm -hmm. I need a minute because I want to make sure I react in a way that's helpful to this family. And right now, if I react, it's not going to be helpful. So I need to pull away for a few minutes. You need to give mommy some space so that I can process and think and pray And then I'll come back and we can deal with the situation in a better way. So talk them through it. Like explain to them that you have emotions and thoughts and things that you need to get. You you need to get your world in order too. And it takes work for you. So they realize that it also takes work for them. And it'll teach them how to pause before they react and, and just look through the obstacles that are facing them and make sure they have a healthy, proper mindset about what those obstacles are. Yeah, that's so practical. As a working mom, two of my goals for the new year are to take better care of myself and simplify. And one of the ways I'm doing that is with HelloFresh. There is a reason HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They make it so simple. All I have to do is pick my meals and my delivery date and all of the pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instructions come right to my door. That means less hassle, less wasted food, and they have health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. The recipe cards are easy to follow and they're full of pictures, so it makes cooking with my kids really fun too. And we all know that when they are involved in the cooking, they're more likely to eat it, so everyone wins. We have a great deal for you right now because I know that mornings can be crazy as a parent. I often find myself forgetting breakfast or grabbing something really fast, but you can go to hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree and use the code cppodcastfree for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash cppodcastfree with the code cppodcastfree. A 
Like, so like I, we can do that right now <laughs> with our kids, yes, you know, like you that's can, really good. No matter what age they are, yeah. you can start helping them. And, and you know, what's amazing when you start mastering these 31 practices, your kids are going to start seeing them mm-hmm. and they're mm-hmm. going to automatically be exposed. They don't have to read reset. They just have to watch you yeah. practicing those things, being in tune with your emotions, understanding your triggers, being able to pause and silence the noise, prioritizing rest, all the different things that you learn in the book. When you learn them and start to practice them in your life, it gives your kids something that's different and healthy and gives them a way to cope with the world in a way that you you don't have to escape. Mm -hmm. If you think about what most kids are seeing right now, you get frustrated and you go to your phone. Mm-hmm. You get frustrated and you slam the door. You get frustrated and you yell. You get frustrated and you escape to something, you know? That's what kids are seeing. Right. They're Absolutely. seeing screens in front of our faces and that's how we're coping. That's not teaching them healthy coping in any way, shape, or form. So it just kind of gives you a different perspective. And, mm-hmm. and not only is it helping you, but it's helping them in a, in a secondary and very influential way. Yeah. That's really convicting in a very good way, (laughs) but I needed to hear that today. Definitely. So you also spend a chapter kind of going a different direction or the opposite direction and talking about toxic optimism, you know, like hiding behind a positive perspective instead of dealing with something hard, which is another way of just shoving our emotions aside. It just looks a little different. And I think- Yeah, it looks so much better. It looks so much more Christian. (laughs) Yes, it does. And I think we're really guilty of doing that, especially as Christian parents, like, oh, it's fine. Like, we're good. God's God's got this. Like, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, how do you, what would your best advice be to parents who are struggling with toxic positivity or shoving their emotions aside? So here's how you know, it's not how optimistic you are that worries me. It's how avoidant you are of hard emotions Mm -hmm. that worries me. So it's like, let's just say your your child is crying and hurt by something. And instead of you coming alongside of them and saying, I'm so sorry, that is really hurtful that that your friend said that about you. And I'm so sorry that that you had to go through that. And Jesus knows how you feel. Even Jesus was sad and he knows what sadness feels like. And he's here for you to help you through it. And I'm here for you. And I want to remind you of who Jesus says you are. And we can validate the emotion and help them. Mm-hmm. Toxic optimism is to kind of go the extreme and say, you know what? You shouldn't be feeling that way because God says you are amazing. You are his masterpiece. So you just need to forget everything that you're feeling because those sad feelings are not accurate. And what you really should feel is this instead because God is good. And, and it's like, invalidating negative feelings and experiences rather than allowing your kids to sit through them yeah. and learn from them. Jesus went through every emotion. Jesus went through the, the sad. He went through anger. He went through fatigue and exhaustion. He went through sorrow and grief. He went through excruciating pain before the cross in the garden of Gethsemane of his body was just reacting to this agony. And he relied on God through it all. God is in it all. In fact, according to the Bible, he's actually more in the hard stuff because it says he is near to the brokenhearted, Mm. those who are crushed in spirit. And I just think we need to be careful to not just wish away the bad and, and when it comes to our own stuff, our own trauma, the things that happened in our past that we maybe never faced, you just say, well, God is good. We got to forget all that stuff and move forward. And But that's actually repressing it rather than dealing with it. And if you want to preserve something, you bury it. So all that stuff you're actually trying to forget, what you're really doing is preserving it. All that hurt and bitterness in your marriage that disappointment, when you bury it, you're allowing it to last even longer than it was ever intended to because you're preserving it underneath the surface rather than bringing it up 
facing it, discussing yeah. it, and allowing the Lord to, to heal. So we definitely have a tendency to use these optimistic sounding Christian platitudes that that replace our willingness to do the hard work of healing. Yeah. Well, and the way you describe it with your child getting hurt, I think the hard thing is that that's like a delicate balance of the two ways that you responded to that child, right? Like, oh, I understand that you're sad and Jesus is with you versus, oh, Jesus tells you that you're this. Like those are, they're both good sounding things. And I think it can be easy to slip into that so quickly. Yeah. Especially it if it's be. a habit that you've developed over your life. But but it's not about what you say as much as it is about what you feel. Mm. Are you uncomfortable with their difficult emotions? And you just want to like wipe them clean because you're uncomfortable with difficult emotions. Yeah. Or maybe you're uncomfortable with emotions in general and hard things. Yeah. It, it's a lot less about what comes out of your mouth and a lot more about your internal response to the hard things. How do you respond to hard things in your own life? That's a good indicator of if you're the type of person who's willing to face hard things with Jesus by your side, or if you just try to avoid them and cover them up with as many Bible verses as you possibly can, (laughs) not think, feel, or even look at the hard things. And I would say that that's toxic optimism. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to kind of what you said at the beginning with when it comes to our parenting, what's more important is what we show them instead of what we tell them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So this is a great tool for everyone. It's a great tool for parents. What is your best hope for your reader after they finish this book? I think my best hope and what I'm actually expecting, because I'm expecting a lot of the Lord with this Mm -hmm. piece of work. Amen. I'm expecting for people to to move into a new layer of healing in their life than they ever have before. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting for generational chains to be broken. The way that we used to do things, our default mode, like I call it in the book, because of the things we experienced in childhood, that default mode, I'm expecting the Lord to begin to reset and say, no, I have something new for you. You're going to do things differently. And that's what's going to be passed down to the next generation. And I'm expecting that there's going to be things revealed that people never even thought they needed to deal with. Mm -hmm. And God's like, no, you're ready now. It's time. You know, I know you're strong enough and you're ready to do this. And so I'm, I'm believing for deeper layers of healing than ever before. And um, I'm going in kind of expecting in my own life, but also in the lives of the people who read this book. Yeah. I'm believing that too. And I truly have faith that that will happen. So I'm excited for what's going to happen when people read this and just start to heal so that they can be healthier for their kids and for their families. Well, well, thank you. And, you know, one thing I want to add to that thought is if you're going through a season when you feel like you dealt with something and it's coming back up, Mm. like I thought I dealt with my anger, but why am I all of a sudden yelling at my kids again? I do believe that sometimes the Lord brings things up in different seasons to challenge you to spotlight that thing. Mm. And say, it's not that you're backtracking. I'm just taking you on an even deeper level of healing than you've ever had before. Because healing is not a once and done thing. And it comes back up in different layers of our life. But I truly believe when it does come back up, it's God saying, I'm inviting you into a deeper level of healing. Are you willing to go there with me? So don't be discouraged when things come back up. Be excited that the Lord is entrusting you with a deeper level of healing and and making you more like Him. Yeah, I love that encouragement. Thank you so much. You are so insightful. And I just really appreciate how you convicted me (laughs) and challenged me, but encouraged me at the same time. And I know all the listeners will be feeling the same way. So before we go, can you tell everyone where they can connect with you and then where they can get a copy of your book? Yeah, you can get Reset anywhere books are sold. It's on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Um, and you can connect with me on Instagram at Deborah Fileta, F-I-L-E-T-A. Uh, DebraFileta.com is also my website. There's a, a network of counselors there if you're looking to get plugged in with a counselor. Um, there's information about my books and resources and blogs and podcasts and books and anything that you'd be interested in will be there. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'll put those in the show notes so everyone can find it because you have a lot of great resources on your website. 
Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much. And thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on. This was great. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed our time with Deborah today. I'm feeling convicted to continue practice pausing. And more importantly, not just walking away from a situation and numbing my thoughts with social media or a couple of Oreos, but pausing and turning to the Holy Spirit for a reset and wisdom. So check out Deborah's website for a lot of really great resources, including a whole network of counselors. The link to that and her book are all in the show notes. So thank you for listening to the Christian Parenting Podcast. I hope you have a wonderful week. May God bless you. May you remember that he is sovereign over every moment. No matter what the circumstance or emotion you feel, he is with you always and he understands you. Thank you so much for listening to the Christian Parenting Podcast. If you haven't subscribed, you can do that now and that way you won't miss an episode. You can connect with us on Instagram at at christianparenting underscore org and see more resources at christianparenting.org. And if you're a mom raising daughters, we have the perfect course for you. Visit cpguides.org to learn more about our Helping Moms Raise Confident Daughters online courses. And lastly, if you have enjoyed this podcast or other Christian parenting resources, please consider donating to this ministry. Visit christianparenting.org and click the donate button. Christian Parenting is 100% donor funded and none of this would be possible without your help. We are so grateful for you. You're amazing. God bless you.